you doing? Daniel Mosnet here with Cowboy Charcoal, and we have got a great one for you today. How about a Bloody Mary? Well, you think all of those drinks are just for the inside of the house? Before you get out to the grill, we're gonna show you how to make a Bloody Mary with ingredients that you prep on the grill. And who says no to Bloody Marys? Maybe Girl Carnivore, but I don't know anybody else. So let's show you what we're gonna do. We're gonna take our tomatoes, we're gonna cut them in half. We'll take our lemons, we'll cut them in half. We're gonna put those right on the grill. Before we do that, I'm gonna add a couple of pecan chunks because I really wanna get a nice char. So I want some of that flame to really pick up on the grill. You can see that we've got the grill going already. Just gonna add some pecan chunks right to the top of the coals. Once we've got the pecan chunks down and they've started to light, we're gonna put the grill grate right on the top and then we're gonna close the top of the grill just so we can make sure that the temperature comes up to even all the way across. I still have a dual zone fire going here. So let's close the grill top and get the rest of our ingredients ready. So to the grill, we're going to add some tomatoes and lemons. First thing we're gonna do is take our tomatoes and I'd like to cut them in half. We've got about two pounds of tomatoes and about two pounds of lemons. Just really kind of depends on your preference. Remember, Bloody Marys are really about personal preference and personal flavor. I like my Bloody Marys with tons of different flavors in there. So when you're cutting your lemons, some people cut them across. I like to cut them on their largest, longest side. So you get as much open real estate to char. So if you cut it this way, horizontally, you get as much real estate. If you cut it this way, you're not gonna get as much charring area, surface area when you put it on the grill. So let's see if our grill's ready and we'll get the tomatoes, the lemons, and even the celery. We're gonna get a nice char on the celery. So it looks like we're about ready. We're probably about 450 or so, so it's a nice hot fire. And then we're just gonna put these right on the top. You can oil your grill if you like, or you can just rub some of your vegetables right across the top whatever you like. And it also looks really nice. You know, you come out, maybe it's the morning time, everybody's still sleeping. This is a great recipe for Mother's Day, Bloody Mary's and Mother's Day. That's like peas and carrots. They all go well together. All right, so now as we're cooking, you can see that we've got a lot more flame on the right-hand side and a little bit less on the left. So we're just gonna move things over just a little bit. You can tell that our tomatoes are already starting to char that we're right in the middle. So just pay attention to where your heat is coming from and adjust accordingly. But that char is really what, you're, what you wanna look for. That's really the main ingredient in this Bloody Mary is that smoky charred flavor. We're cooking these today over cowboy oak and hickory lump. We've also added some pecan chunks in there. And you can see what we're cooking with. It's just beautiful lump charcoal. We need to move our tomatoes in, in a little bit just to get a little bit more of that char. Don't be afraid to overchar. You know, you really want to see some good, some good marks all the way across, especially on your lemons. This is the, a great way to season fish, to add any vegetables. If you're cooking vegetables on the grill, just throw a couple lemons on there. And as soon as your vegetables are done, just give it a nice squeeze right over the top. It really adds a lot of brightness and a lot of flavor. All right, I think we've gone far enough with our tomatoes. Get these off the grill. You can see that the skin's starting to pull back. All of that char will just add a ton of flavor. Now, once we've taken our tomatoes and our lemons off the grill, I'm gonna get a little bit more char on our celery. So I'm gonna put those, I'm gonna put the thicker part towards the fire and the smaller, thinner part away from the fire. Remember, we have two zones. So I'm gonna let those cook for a little bit. I'm gonna shut the top so they don't burn while we get everything going in the blender. Now, for the concoction. Good blender is very important. The other thing you wanna make sure you have is have an open top. So when you put all your hot ingredients inside and the steam escapes, you can let that steam get out so it doesn't explode on you. So you make sure you have an open top on your blender. Okay, now we're just gonna add our ingredients. Wanna make sure you save as many of the juices as you can. So let's move a little closer here. 
don't worry, these will chop down pretty easily, pretty quickly. So you can just load it up and then we'll add as much of the juice as we can get out. So I'm trying to get the seeds out as I squeeze them. You can do this in a cloth, you can do this separately, you can do it in a bowl if you like, and get a little even more juice out. Okay, so that is our the base of our mixture. Now to this, we're gonna add just a few more things. We're gonna add some horseradish. We're gonna add a little bit of sugar, bring that sweet out, a little bit of Worcestershire sauce, and then salt and pepper to taste. And then we'll give this a blend. So now we've got our mixture blended. Give it one more. Give it one more. And that smells, you can smell the horseradish. You can smell all those charred flavors. Oh man, that smells fantastic. And then make sure when you're done, you're gonna make sure you wanna strain it out so you can get any, any seeds, any skins, or anything that just didn't break down well enough. You take that all out with the strainer. So as this is going, we're just helping it down. Now again, this is gonna be really hot. So you're gonna need to make this ahead of time. It'll last in your refrigerator for about a week before you use it. So you can make this on Friday if you're having a weekend event. It's a great cocktail for Sunday brunch, Mother's Day brunch. So as this strains out, you've got an, an excellent base. All right, now the important part. Let's assemble our Bloody Mary. So we've got, I like to serve mine classically. We've got a nice ball jar glass. To the rim of the glass, I just hit it with a little bit of lemon. And then I'm gonna top mine here. I made a little brown sugar, lime, and steak seasoning rim. We're just gonna rim the top of the glass. We'll add our ice right to the glass. All right, so now that we've got our ice in our glass, gonna show you a few little tricks we put on the grill. So we've got a great recipe for candied bacon, so pig candy. We're gonna skewer that. We're gonna use our grilled celery. You can see that celery that we've had on there getting a little bit more smoky flavor. We're gonna put that in there. We're gonna top another skewer with some grilled tomatoes and that lemon that we did from earlier. Now, for the important part, we're gonna take our cocktail shaker. This is the charred tomato juice that we added before. We strained out, we'll add a little bit of that. We'll add a little bit of vodka. This is Tito's here, but use anything you like. We're gonna add a little bit of truffle sauce. You can add any, any hot sauce that you like. I like truffle hot sauce. It makes it a little bit more decadent, a little bit more over the top. Uh, I'm gonna add a little bit of Jack Daniels steak seasoning. We'll add a little bit of that to the top as well. So I just wanna give this a quick little shake just to make sure that all of the flavors are well combined. We'll let that sit in there and then we'll show you how we put together our garnish. So we've got our pig candy, that's gonna go right inside. We've got our celery stock, that's gonna go inside. Let's grab our tomatoes. We'll skewer those as well, and our lemon. And then we've got our pickled okra and our hot peppers. So you can do this in any manner you like. I'm gonna do it where we've got our lemon sticking out on top so it makes a little nicer presentation. We'll add our tomatoes. We'll add a piece of okra, and then we'll do it all over again. Tomato, we'll add a hot pepper, add a piece of okra, and another tomato. We want it to stick out of our jar, so we wanna be about that high. And the okra, since you've grilled the tomatoes, the okra and the hot pepper, those are gonna stick a little bit more on your skewer, so you wanna make sure that you end with those if you can. All right, so now that we've got our skewer ready to go, we'll put in our celery. Put it in this way here. We'll add one skewer right to the top. We're gonna add our bacon. Boy, that looks pretty just like that. We'll add our bacon right there. We've got this well shaken. We'll add our Bloody Mary mixture right to it. And then I'm gonna add just another pinch of steak seasoning right to the top. 
We'll put our straw in because it's kind of hard to, to reach in there for a drink. Oh man, that's delicious. So there you have a fantastic Bloody Mary recipe for Mother's Day, a holiday, or any day. I'm Daniel Mosnet with Cowboy Charcoal. Thanks for watching. Keep cooking with Cowboy.